Hi. Um, today I am going to uh, talk about the neural networks for dummies by dummies. Uh, I wanted to do a talk kind of uh, demystifying neural networks because they sound really scary, but they're really awesome to code and you can brag to your friends and colleagues that you've written a neural network. Um, but uh, the agenda for today is uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Uh, I'll talk a bit about what the neural network is, do some simple theory, and then uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how it's simulated and my case. Uh, a bit of the motivation behind this has also been the new uh, AI things more recently. Some of you may have heard of uh, Google's AlphaGo, I think it's called, that beat some uh, Korean world champion in a board game called Go. And also uh, Google has some deep thought projects on images that have uh, produced some really trippy images that have uh, gone around on the internet for some time. So that's really cool, and I think it would be cool to write something like that myself. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I am a software developer at a company called Fuse. They, were, they used to be called Outrax, if someone has heard of them, uh, but they rebranded. Uh, I'm the gathering participant. This is actually my sixth year at the gathering, uh, third year in crew. I'm a hobby programmer, and I have been so for around uh, five, six years now. And uh, I am uh, currently 16, no, 17, but that will change in a few days. Um, so, what's the goal? I am lazy, right? And it would be awesome if I had a program that could write an AI for me. Like, because remember, we have a competition here called AI programming. And in that competition, you write an AI. Imagine if you had a program that wrote that AI for you, you'd be getting in free cash without much effort, right? Um, also, um, writing logic is, that point shouldn't be there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, actually no, it's supposed to be there. Uh, writing logic is hard, uh, not is a hard. Uh, this year's, uh, game, I'll talk a bit about it later, but it requires you to know about uh, uh, parameter representations of lines, which I do, but it's hard work, and uh, yeah. Uh, another question I've always wanted to ask is, are you able to win the competition using computer-generated code? Not just because I want free money, but because, I mean, it would be awesome. Um, it would also be cool to have uh, the ability to use multiple computers to collaborate. Uh, some of you may be interested in uh, distributed computing, maybe having a cluster of Raspberry Pis in your bedroom or something, and I think that's cool. And I want an excuse to have that, right? And also, there's a lot of other usability cases. You could write an AI that trains itself up to uh, understand stock prices, not that I'd recommend that. Uh, or, you know, whatever you want. Um, so, what we are um, facing is called machine learning. It's pretty simple. It's when the machine learns the task by itself. You don't really have to tell it what to do. You just kind of give it boundaries and, and, and how it's supposed to learn it. Uh, there are many types of uh, machine learning, uh, and they have been around for a while. Uh, this is what we want to do. This is our task. Uh, there are different types of machine learning. There is uh, supervised learning, which means that the AI is given an input, and it's given the output we want it to have, and then it adjusts itself so that it maps the inputs to the outputs like they should. Uh, this way, you will kind of uh, generate a formula that uh, builds, uh, that gives you the output you want. You also has, have uh, unsupervised learning, which is when the AI is given a set of inputs and outputs, but it, does, it isn't given anything more. It just has, have, has to figure out how it works for itself. Uh, there is also a third type, which is reinforced learning, which is what we want. Uh, in reinforced lear learning, um, 
the uh, AI is constantly interacting with the world and is doing a task. And now and then we are tell the AI how good it is at doing the task. And then it will adjust a bit and see if it does the task better. And if it does the task better, we'll use that and then we'll continue on like that. Uh, it's kind of like you know evolution theory. We're trying to breed a bunch of AIs and we're trying to find out which AI has, is the strongest chance to survive and we take that on. Um, yeah, that's what we want. Uh, but why? Uh, as I said, it's cool. Uh, there is a lot of projects using it nowadays. Uh, I think Siri uses uh, a neural network. Uh, AlphaGo uses a neural network, as I've said. Uh, but also experience. There is a lot of experience to gain from this, like uh, programming for distributed computing, like I wanted to do as a part of the project. And also just, you know, all the times you code, you get the experience, so why not? So first, what is a neural network? Uh, in layman's terms, I would describe it as a virtual brain, right? Your brain is uh, built up of millions of billions of small neurons, and they don't do much alone, but when you group them together and you connect them together, they do surprisingly much stuff. Um, we can uh, simulate brain cells, uh, and uh, we uh, replace the black magic that happens in our brain that lets us think and exist uh, with simple operations. So, uh, for instance, uh, in my example, I'm just using things like addition, multiplication, and even uh, calculating average, stuff like that. Uh, there's no really any formal definition of what a neural network is, uh, but uh, Wikipedia had two good ones. Uh, something that contains a set of adaptive weights, for example, uh, numerical parameters that are tuned by a learning algorithm, which means that it has numbers and you can tune them so that uh, it uh, acts more like you want it to do, or uh, a capability of approximating non-linear functions of their inputs, which means that basically uh, the capability of generating a non-linear function, uh, which uh, uh, is as close as possible to what we want it to output. There are also different types of neural networks, right? There's, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe you've heard of a multilayer perceptron. Maybe you've heard of deep learning. Deep learning is very popular with Google and the big guys. Uh, and also conventional neural networks. Uh, a multilayer perceptron is when uh, you have uh, multiple layers and, uh, and you kind of, uh, uh, you start with a start nodes or cells, and then you have different layers with cells that are connected to each other, and then you simulate one layer at a time until you reach the end. Uh, deep learning works a bit differently. Uh, you kind of layer on top different uh, net, uh, layers that do dif does different stuff. For example, one layer may take an image but convert it to a vector or maybe a sc scalar or something like that. And, and you just stack them on top, and then you can adjust numbers inside them to make it act more like we want it to act. Uh, we also have a convolutional neural network, very uh, interesting word, which uh, basically is made to mimic how uh, our visual cortex in our brain works. Uh, in our brain, there are cells that are uh, on top of the uh, nerve cell from your eye. And they basically map to the different uh, uh, cells in our eye that see light. And they handle that information and take it on. So in the convolutional neural network, you'll, for example, have uh, input nodes sampling a pixel at a time, per one per uh, cell, and, and giving that on into the uh, network. So. I read a bit about it, but I didn't really like the layer approach. I wanted something a bit more organic. It probably already exists, but I couldn't find any name for it. Uh, but this is how I designed my network. Um, I made different types of node. Every node type, the difference between a node and a node is that um, they have unique um, operations that they do. One node may be multiplying two numbers, one might be dividing two numbers, 
one might be doing the average, and there's even support for stuff like uh, you could have a sign node or maybe a, a vector node, though they are very computationally intensive relative to the rest of the nodes, so you'd have to get some kind of probability weight on them to not uh, slow down your AI too much. Um, each node does a simple operation uh, and passes it on. It, each node has an input and an output, and it basically grabs all the inputs and does something with them and outputs it to as many nodes as you want. Um, entry and output nodes are used to give and take data from the network, uh, and then uh, nodes are connected together using connections. Uh, something that's interesting about connect connections is that they have a scalar, a scalar. How, I don't know how you pronounce it in English. Uh, that can be adjusted, so you can uh, the AI can randomly select how much a connection actually means to the node that gets that data. Uh, it's all about creating more variation, so there's more uh, possibilities of things. Uh, here is a simple visualization. I made it in this presentation tool that I've never used before, but it looks really good, so I chose it. So uh, pardon the uh, ugly line art. But basically, the con uh, concept is that we have inputs, and they can be randomly mapped to any node, including outputs. And then um, we have point cloud, which consists of the rest of the po points that aren't inputs or outputs. Uh, they do all the mathematical stuff. Uh, and then they have connections uh, out. They can have connections back to somewhere before them. It doesn't really matter. But what happens is that when a number is set here, it gets propagated here, and it's, uh, uh, some operation is done, and it's sent on. Uh, yeah, that's basically that. Uh, so, the game. Uh, how many of you have seen the AI case? One, two, so a few people have seen the AI case, right? It's called Turn On Me. And it's a pretty cool case. Uh, I think two years ago there was an indie stand over there that showed a similar game. I don't know if Martin has been uh, inspired by that or not. But basically, players play as rockets orbiting the sun. Uh, and everyone starts with a set amount of energy. In turn on me, it's 1,000 energy. Uh, over time, energy is lost, one per tick, naturally. And you also lose additional energy by firing missiles. Uh, these missiles can hit other players, which means that they lose energy, extra energy, which is how you eliminate players. But in addition, uh, those missiles give you the energy they took, so you can survive longer by hitting enemies with missiles, as well as you'll kick them out. Uh, energy depleted means you're out and the last person standing wins. Uh, I was going to put a picture there, but uh, I finished the presentation five minutes before I started, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but that's basically it. It's a really simple game, and it's, I think it's cool, at least. So, execution. How did I plan to do the game, uh, do the AI? There's a lot of planning to this. Uh, my plan was to uh, distribute computation on several servers, right, because that's cool. Uh, I could run the simulation for a month or two, maybe, you know, uh, servers are expensive, or expensive, so uh, I couldn't have it running forever. Um, and hopefully, profit. Uh, one thing to note, uh, node propagation is a bit interesting. Uh, I was going to put this slide earlier, but the presentation tool didn't want me to do that. Uh, node propagation is uh, what we call when we send data through nodes the act of transferring the data and simulating it through the neural network. And it basically works by starting with the input nodes, and then we see all the nodes that are connected to the input nodes, and we add them to a list. Then we go through or iterate through all those nodes. We calculate what they are supposed to calculate from the input nodes, and then we get the nodes that they output to and add them to a list. And then the next time we iterate, we do those, and on and on until we hit the output nodes, which means that we're done. It is a lot similar to A star, I think. 
uh, or at least how A star iterates. Here's an example. Uh, I tried to show to the uh, my best how it's supposed to propagate. Uh, but basically, all these input nodes are done on the first uh, iteration. And then we get all the nodes that they are connected to. So in this case, this node, this node, and this node, as well as this node. And then on the next iteration, we go through and we uh, look at the input values, which for this one is this and this. We calculate the value and then add this to the list of nodes to do next round. Same with this. Get the input value from here and here. Calculate, add these to a list. But this one is already calculated. So if we add it to a list, there will be an infinite loop. So instead, we just do it next round, which gives some issues, which I'll talk about. Uh, also, it means that the outputs are reached at uh, different uh, intervals, but I mean, that's not really a big issue. The biggest issue is the fact that uh, the value from here sent back here will not be simulated because this node has already been simulated in that tick of the simulation. So, uh, another question is how do we input data into the network? The game has a variable amount of missiles and players, which is a huge issue. Uh, this is designed to work with a fixed and predefined set of inputs and outputs. Uh, if the game has a variable amount of missiles and players, we're screwed. So <laughs> the solution, or the solution that I'm using, is that I'm, uh, we have uh, 32 uh, inputs for X and Y coordinates of the first eight players and 32 missiles. And then we'll have uh, 32 and eight inputs which are either 0 or 1, depending on if the uh, corresponding uh, x and y coordinates are in use. So we'll basically just tell, uh, give the AI the first 32 missiles and the first 8 players and tell them which ones are in use at the moment. Uh, if there's more than 32 missiles, we're screwed. If there's more than 8 players, we're screwed. But in this case, that's all we can do. What I want to do and what I plan to do with uh, a video game called Undertale after the gathering is that I'm going to downsample the window and put an input node for each pixel and try to teach it how to play Undertale. Uh, that might be a solution, but then it has to learn to read the screen, and I think that's going to take more time, though we don't have any experience with that. More on that later. Uh, the next is how to talk to the AI. Um, all the game's controls are binary, except I think the direction you want to fire your rocket when you change orbit. Uh, to do that, we just check if an output value is more than 0 0.5, and we just say, yeah, that means that the AI wants to do that. It's not really big of a deal, but it's, it's one of the things you have to think about when you uh, write the uh, handler. Uh, here's a nice flowchart of how uh, the network works, or how the server works. Uh, it starts by generating a start candidate. This is the original uh, neural network that we used to start this whole uh, iterative uh, um, work. Uh, people connect, server clients connect, whatever. But after we generate the start candidate, we get into an infinite loop where we get all the candidates that our clients have uh, uh, that our clients send based on the start candidate we made. We find the best candidate by running a local simulation on the server where the AI is battled to death or whatever the uh, case may be. The best candidate is then sent to our clients again, the servers, the volunteers, whatever, uh, as new uh, AIs to work on. And then we get back here. We wait a few minutes and then we ask, okay, well, what's your best AI now? And they give them to us, and we do the same again. Uh, which is simple, I mean. Not really that big of a deal. Uh, next is a computing power plan. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. My plan is to buy cheap VPSs, virtual private servers, right? You can buy, like, a month at DigitalOcean or whatever for $10, Amazon probably has something like that, Google has something like that. 
not that big of a deal. But if you have multiple servers and you run them over months, the price is going to add up. Uh, another idea is the Raspberry Pi. It is incredibly cost ineff uh, inefficient if you want to compute on them. But they're cool to have in your bedroom. Uh, and they're a nice way of uh, learning how to set up clusters. So that might be an idea if uh, experience is what you're looking for. Volunteers is also an alternative. Have a few friends that are uh, not using their PC this weekend. Ask them to run your client. Uh, so there are some potential issues, of course. A VPS costs money, as I've said. Uh, I do not have a full-time job, and I'm not going to force my father to pay for thousands of dollars in uh, server bills. So VPSs are not a good long-term solution, right? And the client might even crash without us noticing it, with a, if we don't write code that notifies us. But it's easy to forget to check if they're still running. And when you have 10 virtual private servers, you're not going to check everyone, right? You're going to open a few and be like, yeah, they, they're still running, fine. And then you'll find out that shit, five of them are down and two days before the competition ends. Uh, another issue is that this project is a lot larger than originally planned. Will I make it in time? And that's the fun question here. Uh, it started off being kind of me wanting to create a neural network that learns how to play a game. And then I started adding features like uh, networks, uh, being able to use multiple computers, stuff like that. And also, I, uh, I figured I should probably write the test game, uh, which resembles Counter-Strike, but is in two dimensions, in order to see if it works. Uh, but there, that's issues. Now, there are some lessons learned about this that I hope I can uh, bring on to other people. <laughs> it's Thursday, and the code isn't done. And that happens, right? There's always party coding. Uh, but the issue with a neural network is that you can't finish five minutes before the deadline, because you need to give it time to grow. You are basically a virtual botanists, and your neural networks would be your flowers or whatever. You need to give it time. The obvious fix would be that VPSs are even cheaper if you pay by the hour and don't only use them for two days. So you could fire up 50 uh, instead of uh, a few for a month, and that might work. But the biggest issue is that code takes longer time than expected to write. You think something is easy, and then you, you hit some technical barrier, and, and you use time trying to figure out how that works. I am a bit too obsessed with trying to make things elegant, which means that I waste a lot of time sitting on my ass thinking, no, I don't want this solution, because it's not really the best. And so I, I waste a lot of time trying to uh, find a better solution, which uh, throws away a lot of the time. Um, unexpected bugs is a huge issue. I uh, tried my uh, simulator, and uh, it's glitching. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I tried my test simulator, and it's glitching. Uh, and as, as I said, time is the limit. We need a lot of time to generate the AI. Uh, there are also some things I shouldn't have done. Uh, I continued to write and bug fix my test simulator well into last night. If I would have, for example, used that time to finish other stuff, write the simulator for the actual game, then I might have had that process running in the background now simulating for me while I'm speaking, instead of me having to rush back to my seat to code. Uh, I also shouldn't have over-engineered the system. I mean, this is going to be awesome the next gathering, but I might end up with no AI this year because of this, which 
it, it's not really good, but I mean, there's something to learn from it. So, so it's time for some reflection, right? What could have been better? I should have planned more. Uh, I thought I had it all planned. All the software, all the features were planned from the get-go almost. But I should have thought a bit more at, about how much time things would take. Uh, maybe the solution is a bit overkill. You don't need clustered neural network generation for something like this, right? But next year, for real, it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, definitely. Another thing was, uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I just have to write it. Uh, so it's sad for this year, but at least next year there's going to be something. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, all I have about that.